praise you and we bless you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Bless the young men there and the young lady who brought them men. They kind of remind me of the story of when Jesus talked with the woman at the well. And the men didn't want to believe the woman, but of the woman who brought us to Jesus. And I thank you this morning for bringing these young men. Today's lesson is going to be very short, very quick, but to the point or however the Lord uses it. Because it's God who actually wants those to hear this. And as young men growing up in the world today, there's a lot out there that will catch your attention. Amen. And all of it ain't good. All right. Okay? If you have your Bible, turn to me to first John with me to first John chapter two. First John chapter two, starting at verse fifteen. First John is a very important book because John was an eyewitness to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he one of those disciples whom Jesus really, really loved and gave him a message that the others didn't get. Just like Peter got a message that Paul didn't get. But it's all about the same thing, which is the Lord Jesus. First John chapter 2, starting at verse 15. We're going to read a couple of Verses maybe three. It says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Verse 17. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God right. abides forever. Amen. The subject that I would like to take, as the Lord Jesus has approved me to take, is love not the world. All right. well, wait a minute, Mr. Did Jesus, did, did God love the world so much that he gave his only begotten son? Listen to Apostle John, the lust of it. Don't love that. Don't love the sin that is in the world. Love the person, not the sin. Right. That's the subject we want to talk about today. Love not the world, meaning the, the flesh, the lust of the flesh that's in it. As you know, we have our first time from a major party, a female candidate who is nominated for president of the United States of the world. But we have an old candidate that's been around for a long time called Sin. We want to get that out. <laughs> we want to get in a good candidate, but we want to get out an old candidate. But to do that, the Bible said pray for your leaders. But love not the world and the lust thereof, but to get to the cause of this lust, we're going to have to get to the root of the problem. And the root of the problem of sin is the devil. Young men, y'all listen close because the devil will trick you in believing that everything out there is glittering is gold. But everything that glitters ain't gold, okay? You might see these fancy cars. You might see all these big houses. A lot of them ain't got the legal way, okay? Some of them got illegal, and some get caught. And you see that every day on TV. But to understand this sin, we got to go to the root cause. And the root cause is the devil. Turn to Isaiah chapter 14, cause see, you need to see who's behind the lust or the sin that is in this world. Because it's very important. We see a lot of things in the world but you are not a part of that world, okay? Especially as you are young men right now. But as you grow older, you're going to see things different. Things change, but God don't, okay? Isaiah chapter 14, starting at verse 12, listen to what God is saying about the devil. 
How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which doeth weakest the nations? A lot of people say, well, the devil used to be in hell. No, he just had a place in hell. All right. I want you to understand that very clearly. We have a place in hell. Okay? The devil had a place in hell, but he forsake that place. Why? Because he didn't want to wait on the Lord. He wanted to go to hell himself and rule for himself. For he said, I will ascend into heaven. Whether if he was already there, why he got to ascend into heaven and be like the most high. All right. No, he was here. He had a place in heaven, but he ain't got there yet. And like Pastor Dave always said, wait on the Lord. Wait, I say. But the devil didn't want to wait on the Lord. And that's where it is in the world today. We want to get fame and fortune quick. Selling drugs or cheating, robbing or stealing. Those things are not of God. You must do what God said do from the beginning. Trust him and work righteousness. For all these things, stealing, cheating, lying, and stealing, is going to be passed away. Oh, yeah, you can see the pretty women out there, the beautiful cars out there, the rolled up money. But guess what? All that's going to pass away if you don't get caught. You see what I'm saying? Those things are of the devil. Now, the reason why he had me on this subject is this. For one, uh, one good uh, point, and I want to get to it, is Galatians chapter 5. Because see, we're looking at sin. We're talking about sin. We know that the devil is behind sin. It is a spirit. And then to understand the lust of the flesh, you must understand the spirit that's behind that sin. Turn with me to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 19 now. We know that the devil is behind sin, but we need to look at what sin is. A lot of people don't know the difference between sin and iniquity. I remember when I asked that question, I said, okay, I go to the dictionary and I look up both words. When I went to sin, it said see iniquity. So I looked over to the eyes to iniquity. When I got to iniquity, it said see sin. Didn't tell me nothing. So I went to the Lord and I said, Lord, what's the difference? He said, sin is spiritual that you can't see. Uh, iniquity is the manifestation of what you can't see. Let me make it clear for you. Jesus said, if a man lusts, see, that's that lust. If a man lusts after a woman, All he right. has already said in his heart. All right. You can't see that. But when they get together and get in bed, that you can see. See, that's the manifestation of it. That's iniquity. You can see it now. It's brought forth, okay? So now what we want to do is cut it off before it's brought forth. You can't stop from thinking, okay? But you can cut it off. And that's where we want to get to. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Let's see some of the lust from sin that is in the world. Galatians 5, 19 says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, and that's the key. You can see it. What are they? Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lavishness, idolatry, witchcraft, hater, valence, eliminations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, Raveling and such the like, of which I tell you as before, and I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, well, Mr. Cooper, how Paul laid down the line. But what are these things? A lot of people do not still understand what some of these things are. If I say someone commit a double, do everybody know what that means? First in your heart, then in the act, right? Fornication. Fornication is simply the sexual act between unmarried people. Adultery is the sexual act between married people who are not their spouse. Okay? Every girl out there don't look good, okay? You young men, I want you to help you out here. As you grow older, keep yourself. Don't indulge in these things until you're married, okay? I know it's going to be hard sometimes, but try, okay? 
Well, what about these other things? And I know some of them is out there that you might not have heard of before. Let's take, for example, like fairness. That's a quarrel between people over nothing. Have you ever heard somebody say, why are you arguing about that? That ain't about nothing. Well, the devil will get in the mix and blow it up into something. So don't get mad with your friend or with your buddy just because of nothing, OK? It could be like, OK, maybe I'll go to the store and say, OK, hey, give me a bag. Say we put them together, we'll get us a bag of potato chips. Some might say, well, you got more potato chips than me. No, that's not the point, OK? Watch what you're doing. Think about what you're doing. Don't love just to argue for nothing. There's a lot of Christians in church who argue over nothing. That's not that important. Okay? Right. Love not the world. But you might say, well, I don't do those things. Well, let me bring it home to you where you can understand today of what I'm talking about. Have y'all heard of a show called Dallas? Yeah. On there, they got more adultery. More fortification, more homemongering, you name it, is there. How about another? All my children. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about now? You see what I'm saying? Watch this in. So much of it's going on, tell it to become a part of the world like it's no sin. Think about it. Adolf Hitler said that in his book called Mind Count. He said, if you tell the lie long enough, people will believe it. Let me tell you something. The devil will tell you a lie, and he'll tell it to you and show it to you over and over. That's why you got all my children. And I got one life to live. Why? Because the devil want to show it to you. Oh, it's okay. It's all right. Now I'm going to show you something. Love not the world. Uh, which one of the daytime stories was Susan Lucci? The one never got an award. She always got nominated, but she never got an award. So they said, it, huh? All my, All my children. She never got an award, but they decided to give her one, just to give her one, because she ain't never been, 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 she been nominated, but she never got the award. But do you see what they're doing? They awarded her for whole month. That's what she was doing. She was going with every man on, on the show. But see, that's the world. The world will tell you, that's all right. Go ahead and do that. It's OK. You'll get rewarded for it. No. Love not the world. Love not the world because it's going to be done away with. You see, they have that show called uh, Survivors. And Paul said, they are think of stuff to even do evil. Then they came up with naked survivors. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Now, come on. What's going on in the world? Do you see what's going on? Yeah. They will put it before your face and say, oh, it's okay. Everybody is doing it. No, not everybody is doing it. There are some who are doing it, and there are those who are not doing it. And let me tell you something, the ones who are doing it, 9 out of 10, they're going to get caught. All right. Sooner or later, you're going to get caught. I don't care if it's adultery, fornication, or dealing drugs, or lack, you're likely to catch up with you. Love, not the world, OK? One might say, well, I don't do that. Well, that ain't the end of it. I want you to go to 1 Corinthians. <laughs> go with it, because I want to zero in on one in particular. Go to 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. See, because you young men are growing up now, this is what I'm supposed to tell you now. You're going to run into this one. You watch what I'm going to tell you. You're going to run into it, okay? So listen to me good. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. Neither fornicator, there it is again, nor adulterer, or adulteress, or effeminate, nor abuse of themselves with mankind. Stop right there. Anybody know what an effeminate means? Brother Taylor always said, I'll be looking over the word, and I do. You, you need to. <laughs> effeminate simply means a male with a female spirit. In my day, we used to call them sisters. Nowadays, 
we have to be politically correct. We call them transgender, all in the whole circle of world, homosexual. All simply in the ghetto word, gay. You men are going to, young men are going to run into that sooner or later. You need to know about it now, okay? Make sure you talk with your mother, okay? Because it's out there now. The world is allowing men to marry men. Women marry women. Love not the world. Okay? That's not what God made you for. God made a man for a woman and a woman for a man. Amen. Not man, man, and woman, woman. Amen. But it's so prevalent now. The Supreme Court of the land, the world, says it's okay to get married if you're two men or if you're two women. Spirit John said, love not the world of the lust therein and is of the flesh. A lot of people say, well, it's all right. California did it. New York doing it. How come we can't do it? You don't do it because God said don't do it. Amen. Spirit John said, love not the world. The world is going with gay marriage. The world is going with what they call, uh, 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 what the state call it, uh, partners. They don't call it gay marriage, they call it partnership. That's to cover up what they want to really say. Don't fall for that trap. What did, uh, what did Paul say? Be not what? Deceived. Just because everybody is doing it, don't mean you have it. It's not natural, okay? There's nothing that's going to come about a relationship of a man with another man. Nothing. Nothing but lust. And that's what the apostle is warning us today in this in 1 John. Love not the world and the lust thereof. God loves you. He don't want you to do that. He wants you to be what he desired you to be. Two men can't make a baby. Amen. Two women can't make a baby. Amen. It takes a man and a woman. To make a child. The devil want to kill you all by not reproducing. You see what I'm saying? That's another trick of the devil. Love not the world. That word effeminate, it means a Canaanite. Well, what's a Canaanite? A Canaanite is simply a young man or a young boy that's in a sexual relationship with a man. And that's wrong. You don't do that. Anybody who do that need to meet one of those Ten Commandments. Right. Amen. But you don't do that. Love not the world. Well, how can I not love the world? We, so, we, we This is a part of my sermon, which is a Sunday school lesson that was discussed this morning. Yield not yourself to these things. Well, what does that mean? Yield means to stand with God. All against God. That's simply what it means. It's your will to do what you want to do. You can accept God and do what he said do. Or you can will and do what the devil, or what the world say do. Because the devil is the prince of this world. He's in charge of this world. For the lust that is in. That's how he rules this world, through lust. And he does it through these spirits of adultery, fornication, effeminate. Men acting like women. You don't act like women. You're a man. Be a man. If you're a woman, be a woman. Amen. You shouldn't have a spirit that is of another sex. When you are a male, you have a female spirit, something wrong. Amen. Granted, granted, there are some who are called hermaphrodites who are born both genders. But even the doctor will tell you, in the world, you need to make that change when they're young. You got to decide for yourself what you're going to be. Are you going to be of God? Or are you going to be of the devil? You can follow the world, or you can follow God. That's your choice. In Romans chapter 6, we discussed this morning, he said, let not sin rule in your mortal bodies, this flesh. See, we got to fight with this right here. This thing called flesh, this body we got. Every day, Paul said, I fight daily. 
You have a fight. When you wake up in the morning, you have a fight on your hands. Not with flesh and blood of somebody else, but with your own self, with the spirit that's within you. And we were talking about that this morning, Sunday school. You might say, yeah, child, I'm saved, sanctified, and full of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Don't be fooled. You're still in this, in this flesh. Just like I said, Paul had the Holy Spirit, full of it. And he did a variance. Fell out with bondless over John, over John Mark. Ain't that something? And he had the Holy Spirit. So just because you got the Holy Spirit don't mean that you might not sin. But if you do, the Apostle John said we have an advocate with the Father. Go to God. Get on your knees and pray to him. He said if you confess, That's right. he faithful and just to what? Forgive. That's right. And cleanse Amen. from all unrighteousness. Yes, so if you ever fall in a situation that you don't pose to be in, go to God right then. Amen. Don't stop. Just like Monopoly. Don't stop. Go. Amen. Go straight to God. Ask him for forgiveness and he will cleanse you from whatever sin that you may be in. Amen. Don't take God for granted and don't take the devil for granted. Amen. A lot of people say, well, the devil ain't got no power. Let me tell you, God gave him some power for a reason. And if you don't watch it, the devil will use that same power to trick you into some of these things that have been listed right here that you heard today. Well, what shall I do? I'm going to tell you what to do. It's just like what the Apostle Paul said. Cut it off. Right. What I mean cut it off means if you're looking at well, what's this new uh, Siri power? Anybody heard you, you heard the power? Cut it off. Change the channel. If uh, all my children come on, change the channel. Yeah, Days, yeah empire. That's it. Empire. <laughs> Days of my life, cut it off. Now, wait a minute. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying be a TV hermit. No, you can look at TV. TV is good. See, that's really why, see, that's different. Don't watch the lust that is on TV. TV is okay. Don't get me wrong. It's what you watch. Yield not to that temptation that is on TV. That's all. Okay? So, the conclusion of this message is this. I'm in the world, but I ain't part of it. I see it all around me, but I ain't going to do it. Even though if I do get into the world and be a part of it, I have a way out. Right. And that way is called Jesus. Yes, if you just go to Jesus and say, Lord, forgive me for what I've done. Yeah. He's faithful and just to forgive me. Yes, and then cleanse up. And then guess what? By the cleansing, he won't even let you remember. Black and W. So the conclusion is, T.D. Jakes gave a message a long time ago said, get ready, get ready, get ready, right? We here at Faith Deliverance Tabernacle are saying, are you sure, are you sure, are you sure that you're ready? Right. And if you go the way of the world, you're not ready. Amen. You've got to cut it off. Cut off those things that will cause you to sin. Present not your members. Present means don't put it out there. Change the channel. If you're going somewhere and something starts happening, leave. It's better to leave than to stay because if you're out there and somebody robbed the bank, the police will scoop you up too because you what? you in that area. Guilt by association. Don't let it happen to you. And if you do, go to Jesus with it. And I guarantee you, he'll take you through. So I hope you young men especially, get this. Don't let homosexuality come upon you, okay? Don't let it come to you. If someone approach you, tell them, get out, get away from me. Get away from me. I don't go that way. You don't have to get ugly. Just tell them in a polite way, say, I'm not like that, okay? You don't have to be abusive, but don't let them abuse you, Amen. okay? Don't let nobody force something on you that you know that ain't right. And don't you do something that you know that is not right. Okay? So respect God, respect your parents, and respect each other. Amen. Not too many people have respect for one another. 
What would you say if you seen your buddy do that? Don't do it, okay? And if your buddy do it, just because your buddy do it, don't do it, because your buddy did it, okay? Stand up for something. Stand up for Jesus that's in your life, because if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. May God bless you and keep you. Amen.